What is EIDS? Hi, my name is Alexey Konosevic. Welcome to Blockchain State. EIDS is the name of the European Regulation of Digital Identities and Electronic Signatures. It postulates technological neutrality and allows the use of any technology as electronic signature. And at the same time, it introduced non-repudiable qualified electronic signatures based on asymmetric cryptography. If Alice creates her qualified signature under a legal transaction, she cannot deny it. She cannot say, it wasn't me. That gives a counterparty, say Bob, a certain confidence. He can interact with Alice remotely. They don't even need to know and meet each other beforehand a transaction. EIDS, especially when we talk about qualified signatures, is both a regulatory uh, and technological framework. And here is the typical scheme. If Alice wants to get her digital identity and be able to generate digital signatures to interact with uh, services online and with other people, for example, with Bob, she needs to visit Dave's office. Dave is a trust service provider. There are many such trust service providers, TSP, across all European countries. And uh, she can choose anyone as they got an official authorization. Alice needs a protected crypto device. It can be a USB token or a smart card. She can buy it or Dave maybe will give it for free. It's a special device. The purpose of, of it is to securely store Alice's private key and to generate digital signatures. At this point, I have to note that if you think that the digital signature is this or this, then you should stop watching this video as I am referring to a cryptographic digital signature. If you don't have knowledge about asymmetric cryptography, I suggest you watch my educational video first, Basics of Cryptography. So Dave first verifies that it is truly Alice. He checks her paper ID and then he creates a record in his database and adds his digital signature to this record. His signature shows that he is an authorized provider and he verified the identity, Alice identity. The signature leads to a root a signature maintained by a special government agency. I am simplifying it a bit, as in reality there is a hierarchy of authorized cryptographic keys. So Dave, using his authorized private key, signs a so-called qualified certificate. This certificate is based on the X549 standard, technical standard. So basically it is a file that keeps Alice's public key her name, some identification number provided by the government, and her date of birth. It's a minimum set of personal data according to the regulation. Usually the certificate expires in two years. After that, she will need to visit Dave's office again and create a new private and public key. With the private key, she can sign transactions. Signing here also means signing up and logging into online services. The advantage of this system is that the service provider, say some online application, doesn't need to check Alice's identity when she signs up, say on Bob's website. EIDS regulation gives Bob the legal right to believe data that is stored in that qualified signature. In fact, this certificate is her digital identity. So to log in or sign a legal agreement, she has to generate her digital signature, which leads to this certificate. And here how it works. First of all, like I said, it doesn't matter if it is a legal document or a login on a website. In all cases, her computer gets a short string, a hash sum of a file she needs to sign or a verification string for authentication on a website. She takes her crypto device, say smart card, plugs it into a card reader and the application sends the string to the cryptographic processor on that device. The device asks Alice her PIN code. It is the first authentication factor. 
and also the provider sends an SMS text with a code which she must input in the application to get through the second factor. There can be multi-factor authentication and they can use other channels for verification of your identity, not only SMS. When a provider, Dave, made sure that it was truly Alice who wanted to sign it, he authorizes the transaction and sends a timestamp. I'm simplifying here also a bit as a timestamp provider can be another actor in this system, but, but here we will think that it's, it's Dave. When the device gets authorization, its crypto processor generates a digital signature. It's an encrypted string that her computer sends to Bob's service as a reply. Then Bob's system requests Alice qualified certificate from Dave, extracts her public key from it and decrypts this digital signature. And in fact, if it can be decrypted, it proves that it was created with the private key that belongs to Alice. No other public key will be able to decrypt it because private and public keys are mathematically connected. And because Dave verified Alice's identity and authenticated at the moment of signing, Bob now can be sure that he is dealing with Alice. What does happen if Alice's private key is stolen? Alice calls Dave and asks him uh, to make her public key invalid, to, to mark it invalid. So if Eve got that key and somehow managed to use it to generate a digital signature, Bob, when requesting Alice's certificate, will see that it was invalid. So Whatever Eve is signing with this key it doesn't make any sense. Nobody will trust these signatures. That's it. I hope it is clear now that the digital identity and the digital signature are two sides of the same metal. If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. See you in the next video.